just among us, in some towns, they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Phantoms and Monsters Radio where we explore the strange and the unexplained. I'm your host, Lon Strickler. Thanks for joining us. Now, the Phantoms and Monsters Radio channel is made possible by you liking, subscribing, and sharing our programming. Super chat and super thank donations are essential for us to continue offering you our unique content. And you can also support the channel by using Buy Me A Coffee link or banner in the description below. Your consideration is very much needed and appreciated. So tonight, Lisa O'Hara, who has a, a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from San Jose State University in California, where she had lived in, uh, until 2011, she worked for many years in law firms, starting as a floater legal secretary and ending up in information technology and went on to work for engineering companies in Silicon Valley and also in the Department of Defense company that had ties with SRI. She is now enjoying retirement. Since retiring, she discovered that she was a psychic medium and that knowledge was the catalyst for many discoveries about herself, one of which was that she was an ET abductee. Now, after reading Terry Lovelace's book, Incident at Devil's Den, she wrote to Terry Lovelace, and he encouraged her to write her own book, detailing her ET experiences as an abductee. The book is titled Abducted and Furious, How I Fought Back and How You Can Too. She now lives in Chandler, Arizona, with her husband and her two Maine Coon cats. The website is lisaoharaonline.com. So, Lisa, thanks for joining me this evening. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I guess the the most pressing question is, um, after you discovered you were psychic and um, that you had these encounters and you had these abductions, wh when did you start them, and uh, what have you been going through in the you know since that time? Um, what was the first question? Well, when when did you, how old were you when you started this? When I mean, I, when you started when you started having the actual abductions. I'm not sure. Actually, I did a regression and um, I did uh, a hypnotic regression, which I never thought I would do because I feel like the ETs use hypnosis, so it was it wasn't something I really wanted to do. But when I did do it, they said that I was being picked up at age three. So, and I do remember a lot of different um, things happening where I couldn't explain it. I didn't have a label for it. You know, mm -hmm. when you're a psychic or you have prophetic dreams, you can say, I'm a psychic. So the things that happened to me were undescribable or indescribable because, and especially when you're a little girl or a little child, you can't describe these things. They're not, it's not that you see something that you can't describe but it's that things happen to you that you can't describe as well. You know, you don't know what it is. And when I was growing up, I didn't talk to my parents about it. Nobody talked about aliens. So um, when I had these things happen, I just had to note it and then move on and hope I eventually figured out what it was. Mm -hmm. um, since I wrote the book and since um, I, you know, started having experiences. I've still continued to have a lot of really strange experiences in my house. Um, and so I do feel like I am getting either abducted or mind controlled while I'm in my house and I don't actually leave. But because my clothes always smell funny, you know, in an unusual way, which is how I discovered that I was actually leaving, that still happens. So mm. although I am working using the tools in my book that i found they do work um it's just a long process 
So um, when you did discover that you were a, a psychic medium, how did you, uh, how did you ask, uh, how did you uh, figure out that you had been abducted? Was there something that just jumped out at you or was it somebody who told you yeah. what you were sensing was, was what was really going on? Well, it's interesting. While I was trying to figure out how to be a psychic medium and turn on and turn off my gift, um, I was going to a medium, and she she recognized me as being a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. um, so we were working on that, and she it's interesting because she didn't notice that I was a ET abductee. But what happened was I was meditating and I was speaking to my spirit guide, and I felt this really really negative presence in my room. And I asked him, hey, what is that? And he said, it's the ETs. They've come to take you. And before that, I had no idea or, you know, no, not an, ever an inkling that maybe all of those weird experiences from my childhood were actually related to this. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, now, you do have a chapter on tools that mediums use um, in addition to meditation and healing. What, what tools do you use? I used two tools from um, Stuart Swordlow, who was a actual abductee as well. Mm -hmm. He was on the Montauk project. Mm -hmm. I, I located his book because I was getting into healing, and he has a book called Healing Archetypes and Symbols. And so I use one of his symbols regularly with the ETs, and it's called the Brown X. And a Brown X is out all unnecessary negativity in your life. And that's what I use. I also use some uh, another tool that is actual a, a, a violet tetrahedron and octahedron that protects me from the ETs. Interesting. Um, and is that is that the only uh, protection that you use? Well, apparently I need to use more, but uh, I I would use, also use Yahweh. Uh, for whatever reason, Yahweh is an extremely powerful word. And I, I just stumbled across it. Um, I had heard my medium use it quite a bit. And so uh, one night I woke up and my eyes were blurry and I couldn't make them not blurry, clear. Um, and I was pacing around and someone told me, say Yahweh. And I did. And I just chanted it a little bit and all of my eyes cleared up. And also my, um, I felt this presence or this calmness come over my house. Mm -hmm. When uh, now, did you, are you able to recognize when there is a presence, or when you think you're being abducted? Yes, um, I. Well, one of the things that happens is that I'll get what I call a sleep dart. I'll be laying in bed, and all of a sudden, either I cannot keep my eyes open very suddenly, I'll feel extremely tired, or I'll get a little pinch on my arm like a mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it a sleep dart to knock me out, and um, then I'll just fall asleep. I won't be able to stop it. Sometimes mid-thinking, I'll fall asleep. Mm. Now, I know in the book you mentioned that you, and you did mention that you, you noticed an odor, like a, a body odor type of smell. Um, and I have had that from experiences who I've talked to before. Wow. Uh, that does I've never seem... heard of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and and actually, there have been times when experiencers have noticed foreign substances on their body, just like a like a gel or uh, some type of uh, unexplained uh, wetness or something uh, somewhere in their body. Uh, so you know, when you when you come back from your abduction or from your encounter. And we're going to show that we're going to talk about the bruises in a bit. But uh, other than the bruises and the marks, is there anything else that indicates that something may have happened? Mostly it's the clothes. They smell, they smell bad. I do yeah. also have, I do occasionally wake up and I feel like I've been underwater or been right. breathing water. I also have plaque on my teeth and I brush my teeth before I go to sleep. So, you know, I wear an eye guard on my bottom teeth so I don't grind my teeth. And I invariably I'll find that I have plaque. Like, where did that come? I mean, yeah. I didn't get anything in my sleep. I didn't get up. Uh, if I did, there'd be some evidence, but there isn't. So I never know what these things are. 
Yeah, you wrote about the plaque on your teeth. I, and I, I've had people tell me that they felt like something's been placed in their mouths oh, on, on, on several yeah. occasions. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. So Vince is going to put some of the uh, some of the bruise marks up on the screen. Uh, can you kind of detail what what we're seeing here with these these sure. marks? Wait, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that is yeah. the most interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just find these marks on my in the morning. The next day, um, after I've fallen, asleep, been forced to sleep, I find that I have a bruise like that on my leg, and mm -hmm. I take a picture of it. And, uh, you know, I don't know what that is. I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, it looks like syringe marks and, or it's some sort of apparatus that they use on my skin. I don't know what it's for. Um, I've had sometimes numbness in the area. You know, I have no idea. Do you notice any, uh, any implant like, uh, or structure in, underneath there, small structure? No, actually, I, these don't even hurt. This is on my arm, and I was trying to show that some of those marks, um, they eventually turn into that one that one mark on the left. Okay. Um, it, it looks like a freckle, but okay. all of those will turn into freckles. <laughs> but um, they're, I think it's stun gun marks. That's what I think it is, because they're, or it's, I used to think it was a spider bite, because spiders bite in twos, but those are pretty uh, uniformly separated. So mm -hmm. for a while, I thought they were using either cattle prod or a stun gun mark. And that's what I call these because that's all I can think of that even remotely would explain it. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, this was an interesting one. So see that? If you look at it carefully, it looks like SP or JP. It looks like initials. I don't actually know what that is. I've asked other people. They think it looks like some sort of musical mark. Um, yeah. Uh, was, okay, he's gonna zoom it in. Yeah. It actually looks like an indentation of some type there in the middle. Oh yeah, that's probably true. Did, so, have yeah. you ever have you ever noticed any scoop marks or small tissue uh, uh, missing pieces missing? No, I haven't. Uh, okay. The only thing that did happen to me was that I was um, I had I got a cut on my the top of my knee on my right knee. Okay. And my all of a sudden, for no reason, my cut started throbbing in the middle of the night. And, mm. and that was when I thought, uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> no. And that's when I saw a praying mantis by my bed, and she was trying to convince me to go to her shift so I could fix it. And so I must have hurt, you know, damaged a implant. But I didn't know it, so I couldn't feel it. It was hurting, mm. and uh, yeah. And it was interesting. I've seen on some other shows or other other ET abductees where they say that the um, praying mantis have sort of human-like qualities. And that's exactly what this ha happened to me with this praying mantis because yeah. she was talking the way I talk. You know, well, if the bad guys come, it'll be okay. Will it be okay if I take you to my ship? Like, well, you know, it was just funny. So it wasn't formal. It was very much of the way I talk. So I thought that was interesting. And that kind of gave me an, a reason why it wasn't um, fake. Was this mantis or insectoid kind of seemed to be running the show, running the whole procedure that was happening to you? Um, in another encounter I had, yes, it seemed like having male characteristics, you know, like striding in and hitting me on my lady parts with you know, a, a spoon or a tuning fork. It seemed very yeah. like that guy was in charge, and it was a male. And the and the other one felt like a woman, a womanly figure who wanted to take me to fix my implant. Really? Yeah. And she was trying to convey, or it was trying to convey this sort of nur uh, nurturing kind of feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought it was. At first, you know, before I knew any, anything about this, I, I would have taken her at face value. Now, um, I wouldn't, you know, because I realize it seems like it's some sort of manipulation. Okay. Mm. So, um, what are the, what, what, uh, what things do you remember as far as when, when you are abducted? Do you actually remember any of the procedures that they conducted other than what you saw on the body? 
Uh, yes, um, I regularly have things happen to my right eye. And if you see in my photo, or you know, me here, my right eye, my, my right eyelid is swollen most of the time. I've had multiple eye surgeries. Um, so I see that when I'm in my abduction. I see is that, that right? I'm on, yes, I'm on a bed of some type. Something, somebody has taken my eyes out and they're squeezing them. I can feel it. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And, yeah, uh, I, I know you wrote in the book about being able to see a needle going into your eye or, or, yeah. or noticing that or feeling that. Uh, and you did mention about your eye being removed. That's that's pretty bizarre. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know if I have ever heard of anybody having their eyes removed, <laughs> but I, I've heard of their eyes having uh, having needles put into them. All right. Well, I actually have an eye implant and... So uh, in 2015, I had eye surgery because I had something called a victrectomy where the, the uh, lining of your eye, I guess, right. was like it falls down. And so I had all of that, all of those floaters taken out. And, but a month later, everything was fine. And then a month later, I suddenly have uh, glaucoma, which is damaged optic nerve. Wow. And my pupil that worked fine a month ago now doesn't work. It doesn't constrict. Um, so it seems to me that that was an opportunity for them that once, since I already had my, um, eye surgery anyway, to add something. Do you think they have done that in the past, uh, you know, on several occasions actually manipulated you physically? Yes, I do. Can you talk about that? Um, you mean as far as my body or my yeah. mind? No, you're, well, either. Well, I do believe they manipulate my mind. Um, I think that they, you know, when they want to, when they want you to do something, they make it, you know, you feel like you need to do it or you have to have to help them. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and then I believe, I don't know how they get me out of bed, but I believe they use a tone of some type, you know, and then I hear it. I'm asleep, but I hear this tone. I know what it is, and I get up and I leave with them. So, so in other words, you think they use some type of vibration or tone to either either levitate you or, or allow you to follow what they're they're instructing you to do? Correct. Yeah, that's what I think. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard that from abductees as well. Um, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not the only one. A lot of what you're telling me, I, I've heard before. Okay. Um, here's here's a question from Vince, and, and I was about to ask this actually because I've experienced it with others. Do you hear a buzzing like bees at some point? I do. Uh, if I listen to certain music like pink noise, uh, mm -hmm. I will oh, we'll hear that. Most of the time, I will hear a clicking on my right ear only. Um, really? Yes. And I will, and I try to figure out what that is. I haven't been successful yet um, because you know it could be anything. But um, I also hear tones in my ears. And it used to be only when planes went over, but now it's just randomly. You think it's it's some means of con con contacting or connecting with you the, with the clicking sounds? I don't know. I've been under the impression that it's to judge which room I'm in. Okay. <laughs> so they're oh, tracking like me. an echolocation thing, something Correct. like that. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a way for them to keep track of me in my house or mm -hmm. wherever I am, you know, wherever I happen to be. But the tones, they seem to be some sort of brain um, connection to me. Um, not that they're trying to connect to me personally, but to my brain. Right. Like as if there's an implant in my brain and they're connecting to it. Kind of like a modem. <laughs> okay. Uh, now you talked about remote viewing and actually learning how to remote view and uh, some of the pitfalls of it. But how does uh, how does remote viewing come into all of this um, as far as the abduction or your experiences? I don't know. Now, I felt like I was directed to that book. I read it. I was interested in doing it. Um, from my experiences after writing the book, it seems that a lot of people who remote view seem to have or who, are, who feel a pull to remote view then start having a lot of strange things happening to them. Yeah, it can so, happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it and can so, happen. Um, I had no idea that would happen. 
Well, you know, my idea about removing is I think anybody can remove you. Um, just like being a psychic. I think some everybody has some type of psychic ability to some point or intuitive ability. Now, as far as uh, learning remote viewing and actually using the, the right protocol in remote viewing, uh, and like I told you before, I mean, there always seems to be a psychic aspect that comes into it at some point if you are, you do have abilities. But um, yeah, I and I, I use it for a lot of my investigations, and I know others that do as well. I was just curious as to what it, you know, what it curtailed in, in, you know, in your uh, experiences and what you, you've used it to help you or to determine what has happened to you. Well, one of the things is that uh, I did try to do the remote viewing, had some unusual experiences. I did initially think it really opened up my mind to possibility. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I thought I would use it for. Mm -hmm. In the end, I was using basically a what I call the remote view, which was actually a uh, exercise that Stuart Swordlow has in his book, and it's in my book too, um, called the Green Spiral Staircase. Now, interestingly, I didn't had never had a hypnotic regression, but the the Green Spiral Staircase uses a staircase, and so does hypnotic reg uh, regression. Mm -hmm. So I think, from my point of view, when I found a tool to look at. Uh, what was happening to me and try to look behind the uh, memory that was taken out. Um, I was using the green spiral staircase to look at my subconscious mind. And I called it remote viewing of my own mind. Now, whether it is or not, I don't know. <laughs> but it felt like I was seeing a movie of myself and I was able to see right. the, what was behind the screen memory. And so that was what that was about. So it's never it's never in the future. It's always from the past. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's probably removed, Billy. It probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I got an, another question. Have you ever seen craft? Any type of not UFO, but craft or anything that was unusual that was flying and and what did it look like? I didn't know. I have never seen a craft ever, and that's yeah. what I find so weird. Yeah. And so I've seen insides of buildings and hospitals and uh you know i've also with my hypnotic regression that i did i was in i don't know if it was a ship but it was some room where there were only women and everybody was crying and you know so all the women were kept together and apparently all the men were kept together and so uh, i read one of my regressions that showed me having something placed into my body um and you know stuff like that so I have never seen a craft. I wish I would, but I haven't. Uh, I have just seen insides of hospitals. Well, I, I, you know, when I wrote my book, um, you know, most of the time, abductions had nothing to do with craft. Uh, I told you that was about portals and such. And right. um, I, I think in more recent time that more of the abductions or encounters have been either manifestations or uh, in, in a, an abduction would be some type of ethereal experience or a, even like a bilocation, you know, your body right. be in one place, you'd be your ethereal body would be someplace else and not necessarily in a craft. Uh, very few people see craft anymore as far as abductions go. So I don't know if that's some type of evolve, you know, if they've evolved somehow or I don't know, but yeah, it's interesting to note that you've never seen one. Yeah. Um, I mean this, then this alien beings, I mean, the ones you had been encountered with, um, especially the, the insectoid, did you notice any type of aura around the beings, James asked? Uh, no, I never have. I mean, you know, when I remember back, I, I was looking at them, I was just like so fascinated. I expected to see a gray mm -hmm. and to have a uh, train mantis in front of my bed. Uh, which was pretty tall, and you know, as a praying mantis, I, I, I didn't, I don't remember seeing anything like that. I was just so shocked that I would see something like that, that I just was fascinated by the situation, right. you know, and what she was trying to get me to do. And so, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't know. I've never seen anything. Yeah. Um, now you talk about meditation in the book. What exactly do you use to meditate? What do you use a mantra or you use uh or you just do a calming type of meditation to get you into a certain state or how is that 
Well, um, I actually use um, Meditation Oasis because it's guided. Okay. And that's what I use, but um, okay. just because I don't have to try to create anything. Um, but one of the things that's been really kind of worrying me, and that's why uh, I'm not so sure that it wasn't portals, it seems like when you get into that meditative state, it's sort of like a trance. And so it worries me to be using um, just regular meditation music because what trance state and are you in and who's utilizing it against you? So, it, you know, I, I do use some meditation, but some of the music puts me in a trance state. Mm -hmm. And I don't well, that know if that's good or bad. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, um, it's almost like if you, you get into a state before you do an astral projection or, or um, yeah, uh, it may be like that. Uh, now, I don't I don't recommend people doing it unless they know what they're doing. Right. Because uh, that can be a little tricky sometimes. But uh, I can understand how that would happen. Yeah. I mean, because I use meditation myself and I use affirmation before I do RVs. Oh, okay. And it, it'll sometimes take me an hour before I even get into that state where I can actually do it. But, uh, yeah, um, I was just interested in what you used. That's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you talked about pyramids, and I thought that was interesting. What, what, how do you use a pyramid? I mean, what do you feel it does for you? Does it concentrate energy or protect you or what? I think it does. I think it concentrates energy and it makes it kind of like a funnel to your head. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. when I'm sitting there and I'm in the pyramid, I mean, my head is right underneath the, you know, apex, I guess, or the point of the, of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's sort of like a funnel. Okay. I know, I know a lot of people use them, um, either uh, a metal, I think you use a metal one, or yeah. sometimes they use an organ, organ type of stone compound or right. mineral compound. Yeah, interesting. Uh, James asks, have you ever returned or have had a metallic taste in your mouth? Hmm. No, I don't usually have taste, but I do have dreams where I feel like uh, I, I wake up with the feeling that my teeth have fallen out, and mm. <laughs> and some, and I'll have a dream that shows them painting my teeth with something, and it mm -hmm. feels real. So, um, no, I haven't. Speaking of dreams, what kind of uh, what kind of dreams do you experience? I mean. Uh, it, is it is there a range of them or a type of dream that indicates that you may be a being abducted or that one's going to occur or what do you sense? Um, normally, when I have dreams that are stress dreams, I know that I've been taken for sure because it's very stressful for me. And the stress dreams I consider are like the ones. For instance, you lost your purse, you lost your wallet, you lost your clothes, you're in a class that. Mm -hmm didn't realize you thought you dropped, but you forgot, and today's the exam, and that kind of thing. So anything like that, that clues me into something terrible happened, and my brain is trying to to tell me that that happened, but not, you know, can't, wants to make it so that I can deal with it when I get it. So anytime I have those dreams, I know I've been taken, I've been tortured, um, you know, my idea of torture. And, um, and I also just have a lot of really, really strange dreams where they're completely crisp, you know, like everything is super clear, you know, as if uh, I'm like, if I was talking to you, you know, mm -hmm. and I could see very clearly and I could, everything is very crisp and my eyes were super good. And, you know, I didn't have to have my glasses on to see far away. And, you know, so I, I always think of those dreams um, and actually anything that I am not sure of, I just look at. Because you never know, and and unfortunately, you have to continue to try to figure out what the puzzle is for yourself, you know. So. Hmm. Um. Uh, now, when you had the sensation, um, maybe you're t toothless or having issues with your mouth, or any time that you you're, you're you know that you've been abducted or feel that you've been abducted, is there any pain involved? There doesn't seem to be any pain involved. I mean, really? there's that you show you showed earlier they are never hurt so they're is not that right yeah they're That's not bruises. Interesting. the interesting thing too about them is if you, i take a picture of them they disappear right away <laughs> but 
But if I don't take a picture, they last for a week or more. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have had people tell me that have had marks. And th that one mark that you did show, the one with the uh, the triangle mark with the, the, the puncture in the middle, mm -hmm. I have seen that many times. Really? That's, pr that's a pretty common... Wow. That's a pretty common uh, uh, shape, that, that right wow. there. And uh, they seem to quick, they seem to leave very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. That's interesting. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, when you are abducted, do you, is there anything other than, is there anything different that happens on occasion? Uh, something that you haven't had happen before, something very unusual? Um, sometimes I'll feel like I'm lightly laying down on the bed. Sometimes I feel like I'm dropped on the bed. Um, sometimes I'll have uh, gotten up, you know, to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and I'll get up and then find out that if I look across the room, there's something there, you know, and... Um, so there are just times when I don't really know what's going to happen. At that time where I, I was sitting down and I was looking across and saw a tall ET that was kind of bald and looked like Casper, the friendly ghost, um, it was interesting because I thought, oh my gosh, here was this opportunity that I completely lost. I could have gotten up and put on my clothes and then see what happened. <laughs> But as soon as they, I looked over, I guess that's not how I act. When I'm getting ready to leave, it disappeared. So. Yeah, speaking of clothes, and I, this is something that others uh, have mentioned in the past. Have you ever noticed that your clothes are on backward or on wrong somehow have been adjusted or anything? No, I haven't. Um, but I will, I will just find out that they just smell really, really bad. I mean, like, almost like... Um, Bio and feet is how I describe it in the book, but lately it's changed a little. Sometimes mm -hmm. it kind of has a moldy smell, and sometimes it's sort of like a like cafe underground cafe smell. I don't know what that is, but you know it just has this really bizarre smell. And you know it didn't have that yesterday, but today it has it. it now, make I, sense. I, I will let you in on something. There is one odor that I have experienced many times during abductions and during RVs. And I don't know if it's distinctly for me, but I get a smell of cinnamon. Mm. And uh, I have had have RVers tell me that they smell that, have that cinnamon smell. But I do know when I had my abduction encounter uh, or event, that, that cinnamon smell was pretty powerful. So, uh, I don't know, maybe there's something to that, you know, that's why I don't think, you know, when people say that they, ha they, they notice different odors when they get, when they come back from an abduction, that doesn't surprise me because, um, honestly, I've heard all kinds of different things. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I mean, I'm glad I wrote that down because I, now since then I've read a lot of other books and before that I had not read anything except for communion or a couple of things and right. to find out that I actually am in this group, um, which I was kind of skeptical. I mean, I just wanted to help people with the uh, way to fight back against the mind control and hypnosis. Yeah. But, um, but to find out that I actually am an abductee and it really is real. And I think a lot of abductees will think, I know I must have dreamed this. This has to be a dream. It can't be real because it's so surreal. But yeah, yeah, you're you're an abductee. It sucks. <laughs> Have um, has anybody in your family experienced anything as well? I think you mentioned at one point your husband did. Um, my husband just had some. He he never he falls asleep right away. He never wakes up. He come. It's like he's been knocked out. Um, he he had. I used to go out dancing. I used to do country dancing, and I'd come home late at night. Mm -hmm. And one night. On the tip of his cuticle, on the, on like his index finger, he had some lipstick. Now, I can't even, we have a king size bed, he's not even close to me. And there's no way he could have accidentally gotten that lipstick on him. Um, and so I surmise that maybe it was because 
we had gone together and we wanted to remember it. But I don't know. Um, hmm. You know, um, I, I have I have been told by others abductees that uh, usually when somebody say somebody's in bed uh, and they've got her partner there, even even animals that are sleeping on the bed, it seems like when the abduction occurs or when the event occurs, they are totally knocked out, don't move a muscle, like right. nothing's going on, it doesn't bother them. Right. Even when the abductee tries to wake them, it's just right. impossible. Yeah. I heard that many yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really funny because um, in the very beginning, when I first started doing shows, people would ask me, well, doesn't your husband wake up? And I would say, no, I mean, he doesn't wake up. I didn't know why, but now, you know, out over time, I realized, yeah, that's the reason. It's because they've knocked him out first and then they're yeah. not doing it. Out. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 I've heard that. That's probably one consistency uh with abductions is when you know somebody's there with you they're completely out of it they have no idea right. and then of course when you wake up or they wake up and they're not there right or you wake or they wake up and you 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 know you're roaming around the house or something like that uh, right. you know, then they wonder what's going on but um yeah yeah, yeah. actually recently i started sleepwalking again and i would oh, really? find myself getting up out of bed and having to do some tasks uh, there are times when I've woken up and then did, didn't see my husband there, and um, and he must have been gone too. I mean, I really do believe he's gone. He was gone too. Um, yeah. So I think I think we are both abducted. It's just that um, they. He just doesn't realize it. He doesn't realize it. Not only that, but he doesn't want to realize it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I absolutely understand that. With my other family members, my dad had an, quite an aversion to um, science fiction. He would not read or watch any movies that were science fiction. But whether or not he was abducted, he was in the army, and it's possible that he saw some things he wanted to forget. But he wasn't the type to talk about it. Um, my sister, I stayed with her one time because he was passing away, and we were going through, you know, stuff. And I was, we were sharing a bed, and she. She patted my hand and said, woke me up saying, you don't have to go. You don't have to go. So on some level, she, she knows it. You know, she's, she is not ducky as well. And since there are four daughters in our family, right. I think we're all abducted. Well, it, it's, it's possible. I mean, I hear so many times where gen, it's generational and uh, family members, members are involved. I told you about David Eckhart and, um, uh, he, his wife, and his two kids were being abducted all the time together. So, right. uh, and they were they were being abducted two to three times a week for years. Yeah. So, yeah, and, but they yeah. all knew about it. Yeah. Well, that's the sucky part. So, I go somewhere. I don't know where. I don't right. have any memory of it. When I was younger, I would have a memory of a, a black rectangle. That's all my memory consisted of. So mm -hmm. I started trying to look behind that and see. And sometimes I couldn't see anything. Um, and so it's just, yeah, I, I don't know why I don't remember anything I mean, right. and why I have so many screen memories and I look behind that and it'll show me being, you know, having a surgery of some type and being in Antarctica or, um, underground at the, in the moon, you know, and stuff like that. But it doesn't show me who took me, why, you know, any of that. Well, you know, that may be one good thing if you have a uh, you're being used as a target doing an RV. That may come out in that. Oh yeah. So uh, you may want to consider that at some point. I definitely do want to do that because yeah. um, I really do want to find out. Because in my book, I you know talk about being bombarded by remote viewers and mm -hmm. I haven't stopped. So ever since then, I've been harassed. I found I found that interesting. Uh, where you would be in the car and you would notice things in the car that you instinctively knew was a someone remote viewing you or your location. Right. Yeah. So that I think I am a target for a bunch of uh, groups. I don't know who who this is that is targeting me, but I think it was because and I didn't realize this when I wrote the book either, but. 
I've since realized by trying to do more remote viewing is that I, in, in the book, I describe an experience I had, and it was a bi-location, but mm -hmm. I didn't know that at the time. So I didn't know why I was being targeted, mm -hmm. but I must have bi-located in that room. And when I did, someone saw me, and that, then that started a whole storm. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. But, you know, I had no idea. If they had not come after me, I wouldn't be none the wiser. Now that they've come after me, I'm digging, trying to find out what's going on. So I don't understand um, their, their thought process. They could have let it go. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, when I work with remote viewing, I don't go into a location unless the person knows I'm doing it. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of find that a little unethical, but I'm quite sure people have done it in the past. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And actually, uh, go ahead. Oh, these remote viewers, um, a lot of times they pick up my stuff and they move it around. They damage my property. Um, they uh, lord their visibility over my cats. You know, they, you know, they just, they just like really, uh, they put stuff in my car. They damaged my car. Um, mm. Just stuff like that. So uh, I don't understand why a there are people like that or, or entities willing to do that mm -hmm. or if it's just mischievous annoying people <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah vincent asked uh have these beings ever given you any indication as to why they're taking you um no but from my plus getting the puzzle pieces together, it seems like nobody tells you, nobody tells you anything, Vincent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they, um, they just seem to be some sort of experiment. That's what it seems like. Um, you know, yeah. So for instance, when I was in my 30s, I actually found out, I think in my 20s, that I had cataracts and they called them congenital. But the interesting thing is that when I was I've had glasses since I was eight. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever saw that until I hit my 30s. So in my 30s, I had cataracts so badly that they had to give me, to give me cataract surgery when I was 32. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was some sort of experiment. Um, other abductees I've talked to, uh, we've all have been given pre-diabetes in our 30s. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. So why were we all given pre-diabetes? Um, so I've been fighting that my whole life. I didn't want diabetes. And so why would I get it? Why would everyone get diabetes in their 30s? Um, so, you know, I feel like they're either experimenting on us all or giving us a certain affliction. I don't know. Yeah, with all the instances I've heard of over the years, I, I think there is an agenda. Though I'm not quite sure what the agenda is, uh, they seem to jump around a lot of different. Because you hear about a lot of different types of abductions or encounters, yeah. and uh, it's it's really hard to pinpoint exactly why they're doing what they do. Uh, you know, I guess that's what we're trying to find out at some point. <laughs> yeah, I really do want to find that out. Because, yeah. Um, actually, I went to a woman named uh, Kimberly McGeorge, and she said that. Um, I was a military abductee, and that I was also a uh, clone. So, <laughs> I mean, I so I don't know mm. <laughs> if that's part of it. Um, I read Above Glass by Dan Sherman, and it was really interesting that he was saying that some people were put into certain groups uh, for different projects by right. different and that was fascinating, and that kind of filled in some of the blanks for me that I could be possibly in a project and not know it, you know. So, I guess I it's possible. That's, that's right. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, James wants to know, uh, the bruises that you received, did they seem to heal faster or slower for you uh, than a regular normal blue, bruise that you would have, you know, get uh, after you um, had something? Yeah, it, they seem to, if I take a picture of them, they, feel, they go away really fast. If I don't take a picture, they are it's slower. Um, they don't hurt. I can press on them. It doesn't hurt at all. I've had other, um, you know, like scrapes on my arm near a vein, and that won't hurt. Um, it's just strange. It seems like there's just so many. Yeah, that kind of looks like a Y if you look at it, or I guess it could be a triangle. 
but that's why I took a picture because it was so strange, you know. So uh, they only heal faster if I take a picture. If I don't take a picture, then it takes a little longer. Yeah, that looks like an L. Doesn't look like a stamp. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Uh, you, and you say you have had regression therapy done? Yes, I have. I have had it done. Has um, it? Did it? I mean, did the regression? give you any more clues as opposed to seeing a medium or any other type of um, consultation? Yes, it did because, um, you know, she's taking you down the hypnosis road and mm -hmm. she's asking you to look at very specific things in your past that you're interested in knowing. Right. And, um, and initially I did not want to do it because of the hypnosis. Um, thing because that's what I think that they use. They use mind control and hypnosis. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to agree to it. So it took me a while to want to do it. But um, what happened was, yeah, I had a dream. This is a really strange dream and I wanted to investigate it. But it was where I had all, I was in a huge warehouse, not a warehouse, more like a hangar. I was in a hangar and there were all these babies and they were all in refrigerators. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to look at that. And so I, and they were all crying. And so some of them were blue, some weren't, you know. And so I looked into that and there was, I was in charge of all these babies and there was an, like some sort of railing above me where there was some guy or pointy faced person who was the overseer and he was making sure I was doing my job. So it could be. Some of these things I have to do are so heinous, I don't want to remember them. Um, so that was one thing I looked at because it was such a strange, strange thing. And I've never had a ba dream about a baby before. Do you think when they take you that they do have you do certain tasks for them? You know, I do think that because um, okay. there were quite a few uh, dreams I had where I was doing remote viewing for Microsoft and I, ha I couldn't see what I had written down, but I could see that I had written a whole bunch of stuff down. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, the reason I can't remote view here is because when they need me, they want me to use my remote viewing skills for them. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that's a possibility, but I actually don't know. Mm. So, um, what do you think, you know, your book, uh, you, you try to, uh, indicate to folks who read your book uh, on how to help them. What what would you have other abductees do to fight back? One thing I would do is I would write everything down and try to, um, instead of waiting in total fear of, mm -hmm. you know, them coming, I would say that I thought, I felt like anger helped me a lot, but also flipping the switch and saying, Okay, you, I'm your, your guinea pig. Guess what? You're going to be my guinea pig now. And I'm going to write down everything you do so it will help me figure this out. And so sort of be a detective of your life and start to say, this was what happened right before abduction. And I saw this, this, and this. I saw, you know, a big smoke monster next to my windows. I saw my uh, curtains moving, you know, stuff like that. So everything that you see, so everything leading up to abduction, everything, as soon as you get back, if you remember something and you wake up, write it down, write it all down. Because these are the important clues for you, you know, mm -hmm. if you are leaving and your clothes smell funny, write that down, you know. And, you know, in my book, I, you know, try to figure out what's important and what isn't. And, uh, you know, but write everything down at first because there's nothing to lose. And if you have a theory and you, you're going one way, and then it switches, that's okay. Everybody has their own story, their own puzzle pieces, and there's just so much, uh, there's so much information, there's so many details, it's hard to narrow down what's important. But I would definitely just try to think about it as sort of like a special project where you're looking at them too, and you're studying them. Have uh, and you know I think that is important about writing things down. I you know I when I work with a client, that's the first thing I tell them. You know, well from now on I would like for you to write down everything that happens, keep a log of it, 
so you don't forget it and you know that we can go back to it and use it as a reference uh any little thing i mean you know right. you never know you know it's interesting and, and they've got a question coming up of, of Vince is that are you experiencing hauntings or other paranormal activity and you know that seems to be one aspect of the abduction scenario with, with the actual abductee is that they start having paranormal or hauntings and such in the state at their home. Right. Have you had that as well? Yes, I have. And actually, it's interesting. So, uh, you know, Terry Lovelace, who wrote Incidents at Devil's Den, I write in my book that I was reading his book and I kept seeing ghosts walking around in my living room. And so um, <laughs> that's one of the things. But yeah, I, I, now after talking to you before the show, I really do think I have portals opening and all kinds of beings are coming through. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I just see eyeballs. So it's not the entire person or entity. It's just an eyeball. And so, um, you know, and I write about that in my book. I just didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah. You know, that I would see a giant blue eyeball or I'd see a red eyeball or I'd see a face or I'd see you know, uh, a, a eyeball in between the webbing of my right hand where my thumb and my index finger are. So those could be all be paranormal, but I just didn't know it because there was so much stuff going on that it's hard to differentiate if you don't have experience in it. Well, I think there's a, in most cases, a, a fine line between the alien experience and the paranormal or haunting experience, yeah. spirit or whatever entity other than a non-terrestrial i think i think there is a fine line there um many times uh <laughs> even talking you know talking about and i don't know if you're aware of this but people have had ufo sightings and bigfoot sightings at the same time wow you know there's a lot of connection between uh, the paranormal and, and the supernatural and it, it seems that a lot of these things do kind of crop up when things happen. So yeah, that doesn't surprise me that you've had that happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. I wish there was like a little title that says, this is not ET. This is no paranormal. <laughs> because you know, at first there's so many things happening. You don't know what that is. You're writing it down. You don't know if it's ET. You don't know if it's paranormal. You have remote viewers showing up in your car, harassing you. They're you're being scanned and it feels like prickles all the way up your body, up and down, you know, while you're driving. I've seen, you know, aftermaths of accidents over and over, um, dead people, you know, on the side. And so I didn't know if that was part of the ET experience or that was my psychicness coming out. I don't know. <laughs> There's just too many unknowns. Um, when, when you have fought back or when you have pushed back, have they pushed back at you as well? Yeah. Yes, do. What have they done? Um, they just make sure that I am scared to death. No. <laughs> um, and so also I feel like I'm depressed sometimes. And I know mm -hmm. I'm not because I'm not a depressed person. Uh, I'm sunny. I'm a sunny personality. So, uh, yeah, I'll just feel this heaviness. This. I also will have, um, I'll, I'll only be able to see this when I'm driving, but uh, when there's a reflection of a car in front of me, I'll see pokes, pokes in my eye. And sometimes there'll be like a, a triangle with extra pokes on each. And <laughs> I've seen some that are like a question mark. I mean, I have some in my book that talk about it. And when I push back on them, that's what they do to me. Right. They make sure I, and then they make sure I see it to let me know that it happened. Mm. Interesting. I mean, um, and I have had people mention something about uh, them affecting emotions and, and causing uh, different types of emotions at a you know moment's notice. Uh, right. So it seems like that's something you've also experienced. And I was also interested when you talked about being abducted while you were driving, just for a split yeah. second and coming yeah. out of it. Uh, with yeah, it very cool. little lost time, but it, it was, it, you could tell something had happened. Right. And that's the thing is it sort of like, it almost felt like my mind just shut off. But you know, it, you know, I can't even describe it. But I was driving, I was there next minute, I come back, or I'm made aware that I'm there. I don't know. Yeah, it felt like they actually was removed while I was driving. And so uh, the story is I was merging onto the freeway, I drive a stick shift, and I was in third gear, I was about to shift to fourth. And 
so suddenly something happened. I come back to my car. My um, I'm in third gear and I'm drifting to the right where I, you know, instead of merging. And all these cars mm. around me are like, get away from her! No. And they're all peeling out around me and trying to, because something happened, they they were there for it. I wasn't. Right. So, it was scary. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you think about people who say, and I've had people say this to me, that they wish they could experience an abduction? I think, I think they should be careful what they wish for, and they probably are being abducted. They just don't remember it. Maybe. <laughs> because I think every single person is an abductee. But uh, most people don't know about it, and um, and some don't want to know, and that's fine. You know, um, it's it's hard to know it because once you know it, it changes you. It changes your worldview, and it makes you a little bit twitchy. You know, when you start hearing about UFOs, and um, you know, it makes you either want to put your head in the sand and not know anything about it, or mm -hmm. you suddenly. Uh, incentivized to do something or to find out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. so. There's one more thing I wanted to ask you before we go. And you have written in your book that abductors and ETs are narcissists. What do you mean <laughs> by that? I mean that they are, they have no emotions. They mimic our emotions back to us and they always coerce us to do things for them. You know, they're manipulative. <laughs> They're gaslighting us. Uh, they're, you know, they're actually just treating us like cattle, but they want us to feel special. And so they use a lot of the tactics that narcissists use. You know, they mm -hmm. use love bombing. Oh, you're so special. I love you. You're the best. And I need you, <laughs> you know. And, um, but yet they're not giving us anything that we need, right? They're taking. They're right. just taking. And uh, then they wipe our memory so we can't remember anything. So then the next time they pull that on us, we don't remember anything. So then they can use us again. So that's why I think they're narcissists. Hmm. So um, how can people contact you or get your book? And uh, do you have anything planned for the future? Um, I, I can find me on Amazon.com also. Um, my book's there. You can go to my website. You can contact me at abducted and furious at yahoo.com. I'm also on Facebook, uh, abducted and furious. Um, I think, yeah, sub on Facebook. And, um, and it, I am thinking of writing another book. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right now, with all of the weird things going on, I'm trying to figure out how to make it kind of more linear. You know, mm -hmm. that. That book was a lot easier because I just, you know, I started where it started and I ended, you know, in the middle. Yeah. Um, but now uh, there's so many, it's not as clear cut, whereas before it felt more clear cut. So Interesting. Yeah. So like I said before, if you if you want to talk, you know, you know how to contact me. So yeah. um, you, you have a good weekend and uh, I, I hope to be talking to you soon. Yes, I will definitely contact you. Thank you so much. You take care. Okay, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have an unexplained encounter or sighting, feel free to contact me through the Fams and Monsters blog site. I want to again thank Elisa O'Hara for joining me this evening, and, and thanks to each and all of you for watching and chatting. Uh, if you made a Super Chat donation, it's truly appreciated, and your support is what makes this all possible. So please like, subscribe, and share. And if you have a sighting or encounter report that you'd like to be considered for the personal report show or to be posted at FAMS and Monster, feel free to forward to my email at lonstricker at phantomsandmonsters.com. Now, I did want to say that the wing, the worldwide winged humanoid project is still asking for reports. Uh, if you have had a sighting in the Chicagoland metro area, or anywhere else uh, for that matter, please contact me through my email, or you can call me at 410-241-5974. So next week, we will be conducting another roundtable discussion, and this time, the subject will be Mothman and Winged Humanoids. And our guest will be Tobias Whalen, Manuel Navret, and Travis Short.
So that should be quite interesting and very informative. And look, we've got a lot of things to catch up on with what's been going on in Chicago as well. So uh, uh, we'll make sure that we talk a bit about that as, as when we get into that uh, discussion. So until next week, stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.